We live in an increasingly small world. You can now order something from another continent with just a few taps on your phone. Unfortunately, some unwanted byproducts like invasive species can hitchhike their way to Connecticut and flourish. One of those is called the emerald ash borer. And it's been killing trees and changing the makeup of our forests. But what can we do about it? I recently took a hike through Mattituck State Forest in Plymouth with Claire Rutledge from the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. Watch the brambles. We were searching for an ash tree's worst nightmare. What we're looking for is for the um, signs and symptoms of infestation. The cause of this infestation is the emerald ash borer, an invasive species from Asia first noticed in the Naugatuck Valley just nine years ago. It's now spread out across most of the state. As the name suggests, the insect specifically targets the ash tree by laying its larva in the wood underneath the bark. When you look at a big tr a tree like this, only about that much of the tree is actually a living tissue. And by attacking that living tissue, these parasites quickly threaten the tree's health. So they're feeding on this living tissue, and here you can see several tunnels. Here are more and more and more tunnels. They begin to cut off um, the circulation all, all around the tree. And when you get the entire tree girdled, then that's when the tree dies. Hungry woodpeckers do their best to move in and eat the pests. So when you see uh, woodpecker damage on your tree, it's a really good indication that your tree is full up of larvae. And if it's an ash tree, it's a pretty good bet that it's full up of emerald ash borer. Claire and her team are doing more than taking samples. They're leaving behind a parasite of their own. Hey, I got a brood of a parasite. They've been releasing a natural enemy that feeds on the second stage of the ash borer larva. The parasitoid actually pushes her eggs through the bark into the body of the larva and they eat the larva from the inside out. It's really gruesome, uh, but it's great. So Claire and her colleagues are out here in the forest getting samples and mapping the infestation. But once the pest has been established, it's up to towns to figure out what to do with these trees. So you can see that the whole tree has been uh, girdled all the way across it. James G. Gavani is the arborist for the town of Windsor and is dealing with a well-established infestation. We first identified the emerald ash for about five years ago in Windsor. With the ash trees, three things are going to happen. You can treat them chemically, you can remove them, or they're going to fall down by themselves, but they're all going to come down in Connecticut. And in an area like the River Walk along the Farmington River, the town of Windsor is taking matters into their own hands. We have to spend the money to take things down because we do it for the citizens who enjoy go going outside. Although not cheap, James says it's money well spent but has no illusions about the task at hand. We will never be able to er eradicate it. This is one insect that we know we're not going to be able to control. Unfortunately, the emerald ash borer is here to stay in Connecticut. But the hope is, with a little hard work and help from the smallest forest workers, the ash tree will remain a vibrant part of our forest. And if you have an ash tree in your yard that you want to save or you suspect that the emerald ash borer is in your area, call an arborist. There are chemicals that target the insect and you may be able to save your trees. I'm Dan Amaranti, Fox 61 News.